Hello everyone, welcome to Sunya IS and welcome to this lecture and this new series of modern Indian history through MCQs. Now, modern Indian history is a subject which is one of the most interesting subjects because it is very personal to all of us, right? The most recent aspect of history. However, this is also one aspect where people are very scared, where people are very concerned on so many facts that there are to remember that how do they remember all of them. So regarding modern Indian history, what is our approach going to be? See, in modern Indian history, there are two types of questions. One type of question is a doable question and they come from the static portion, the uh, very knowing, the knowable facts, right? Which you are supposed to know as a UPSC aspirant. Now, there are some undoable questions after that. And these questions are supposed to be left. For example, some publication, some newspaper that you have never heard of, right? That question is meant to be left. No one th knows that question, right? But if there is a question of chronology, if there is a question of basic facts, like which was the, uh, vi uh, who was the viceroy at this particular event, right? Or a very famous event like the Chauri Chora moment, yeah, the, uh, this uh, Gandhi Irwin Pact, hai na? Is tari ki jo hoti hai, you are not supposed to miss this. So what our goal in these classes, in the modern history series is going to be, is that we do everything from the doable aspect. Hai na? Everything with proper revision through questions we do of the doable aspects. And it is going to be a long series because modern Indian history is a long subject. It's a long aspect. But uh, nevertheless, what your responsibility is, that after we are done with this entire series, whatever facts you are told in this series, they are all from uh, spectrum only, you should not be missing any question out of this. And whatever comes out of, out of this, um, away from this series, is not supposed to be handled. This is my advice to you. Fine. So the first topic that we are going to do here, which is there in the... Uh, spectrum as well is the advent of Europeans. Now this is one topic wherein people mostly leave this topic because they think that there is so much to cover. How will you cover this? Hai na? So many um, ports to cover, so many governors to cover, so many wars etc. Again we'll do the doable aspects and regarding the advent of Europeans it's not the advent of just the British it's the advent of Europeans. So how many Europeans came to India? We had the Portuguese, we had the Dutch, we had the British, of course, who won over everyone else. We had the French and we had the Danes. Dutch are the people from Netherlands, okay? They are the people from Netherlands and uh, Danes are the people from Denmark. So, ye confusion rehta hai generally. Now, we are going to start with the questions and uh, let's do it fact by fact. Thik? Question by question. Karte hai. Or, as always, you are supposed to see the question. I'll read it up for you. You pause the video, think about the answer and then answer it. Okay. So, the very first question with reference to... Just a moment. Yes. With reference to Indian history, consider the following statements. The Portuguese established their first factory in India granted to them by Zamorin of Calicut. The sanction to establish the first English factory at Surat was given by Emperor Jahangir. And amongst the European powers, the Portuguese were the only ones who failed to establish settlements in the Bengal region. How many of the given statements are correct? So, let's go statement by statement. The first statement is absolutely correct. The Portuguese were the first ones to come to India and the last ones to leave from India, right? So, Portuguese did establish their first factory in India and it was granted by Zamorin of Calicut. And uh, this particular, of course, when Zamorin of Calicut is granting the permission, where is the factory established? It is established in Calicut. So, this is one fact. This is an unchangeable fact. 
and Zamorans were very welcoming to the Portuguese. Please know that this particular uh, arrival of the Portuguese is about a century earlier than the British. They arrived in India exactly at 1500. 1498 Vasco da Gama arrived and 1500 Pedro Alvarez arrived and uh, the Zamorans welcomed him. Fine. So first is correct. Second is also correct. The English gave this permission to uh, the English per, uh, had this permission from Jahangir to establish their first factory at Surat. And a very important aspect was that this particular event happened in 1613. As you can see, it is uh, way ahead than the arrival of Portuguese. So till the time the English arrived, the Portuguese actually fell away from the Mughals. The Mughals were not very happy with the Portuguese because Portuguese were doing piracy. They were trying religious conversion and whatnot. So, Jahangir very happily welcomed the um, English visitor who was Sir Thomas Rowe. Know this name. Okay, Thomas Rowe was the name of the person. And who sent this, sent this person? It was the King of England, James I. James I sent this person to visit the Mughal Emperor Jahangir so that a commercial treaty can be signed. And of course, Thomas Rowe is a official of East India Company. Fine, this is the official of East India Company. So, these names are very important. Now, the third one, this is actually incorrect. The Portuguese did set, uh, establish their settlements in the Bengal region. And there are some places in Bengal which you need to know. In Bangladesh... There is Chittagong in current day Bangladesh, which was of course a part of Bengal back then. So Chittagong, the Portuguese were there. Then there is a place called Satgaon. Portuguese were here as well. Bandel and Dhaka. Dhaka, you know, the capital of Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh. So Dhaka also there. So very important that yes, Portuguese actually were on the Bengal side as well. Okay? So, here only two is the correct answer. With every question, you will get a few facts and it's your responsibility to either note down those facts or highlight them because every fact that is being covered here is an important fact. Fine. Moving on to the next question. In the 17th century, in which of the following was or were the factory or factories of the French East India Company located? Karaikal, Yanam, Machili, Patnam. These kind of questions are no doubt difficult because there are so many ports to remember. So, uh, uh, about the French East India Company, they were the second most powerful, formidable power in India and British actually won over them. So, it's important to know that where they established their first factory. The first factory that was established by French was in Surat again. It was in Surat and it was in the year 1668. So 1613 the British established in Surat. Much much later 1668 they established their factory. The French established their factory in Surat. Then later from Surat because there was conflict of interest. There was a lot of uh, competition from the British. They moved their factory to Masuli Patnam. Masuli Patnam which is nothing but Machili Patnam only. Okay, in Andhra Pradesh. So, Masuli Patnam. Then, other places are very important because you are supposed to know them. They established in Pondicherry, which is called Puducherry today. So, Pondicherry was a French establishment. Very important, Chandar Nagar. Chandar Nagor bolte the usko. Chandar Nagar mein, inhone apni factory lagai. Then, Karaikal and Yanam. Okay, Puducherry ki territory is haj bhi. So, Karaikal, Yanam, Surat, Masuli, Patnam and overall Pondicherry to hai hi hai. So, these were the places where French established their factories. Yaha par all three is the correct answer. See how late they have established their factories. Yet, they were pretty formidable enemies for the British. Okay, next. Which one of the following is the correct statement? 
the modern kochi what was a dutch colony till india's independence the dutch defeated the portuguese and built fort williams in modern kochi the modern kochi was first a dutch colony before the portuguese took over and modern kochi never became a part of the british colony uh, which of the following is the correct statement so kochi as you can clearly see is an important place and it was first a dutch colony and then it became a part of the french empire so the first statement becomes incorrect because from the dutch it was initially a dutch colony but then the portuguese took over so it is not possible that it was a dutch colony till independence so this one is incorrect portuguese took over so this one is incorrect then dutch defeated the portuguese and built fort william no this is actually incorrect the portuguese defeated the dutch modern kochi was first a dutch colony before the portuguese took over this one is absolutely correct modern kochi um, never became a part of a british colony even this one is actually correct a uh, british colony ka part nahi bane the so yahan pe two statements here are correct just for your knowledge hai na uh, not one statement but two statements here are correct so very important kochi is one of the very important places which never became a part of the uh, british colony itself so third me c or d dono hi correct hai now let's come to the next one kochi is an important place next pe aate hain consider the following statements alfonso de arbicuk championed the policy known as the blue water policy vasco da gama established the first portuguese factory in india and francis de almeida was the first portuguese governor in india how many of the given statements are correct this is about the portuguese and how they established themselves so the first governor in india portuguese governor was definitely francis uh, francisco de almeida so third statement is correct you have to remember this name francisco de almeida the first portuguese governor and this very person was the person who championed the blue water policy basically establishing a very strong navy so that there can be no no challenges to the portuguese power in india so it was not alfonso de arbicuk but it was the it was francisco de almeida who championed the blue water policy the first is incorrect so although francisco de almeida was the first governor he was not the most powerful one alfonso de arbicuk was also uh, was actually the one who was the real person really who established the portuguese power in india right so this is very important and um, the agenda of alfonso de arbicuk was that portuguese has to have a proper uh, you know base in india because india was of course a very jise kehte hai na sone ki chidiya to thi thi to at that point of time india was in the eyes of the portuguese and alfonso de arbicuk was the one now vasco da gama Vasco da Gama was never really interested in creating a factory in India. Vasco da Gama was the first person who entered India, who saw India, and who um, who was able to see of a alternate route towards India. Because if you see, this is India, this is Europe, and the route towards India went through West Asia, and here all the uh, you know Islamic rulers. they were not really very willing to give that passage to europeans and there was heavy tolls and even fights that were that used to happen so what the portuguese and in fact the entire europe wanted was that this is africa they wanted an alternate route towards india and that alternate routes to was from the cape of good hope and this is how they entered india through the alternate route so vasco da gama did not establish a factory he actually just came to india went back with a huge profit came again in india hai na and hearing his experiences a proper structured way of entering india was established the first portuguese factory was made by 
पेड्रो एलवेरेस कैब्रल पेड्रो एलवेरेस कैब्रल ठीक है एंड दिस वॉज द पर्सन हु एस्टैब्लिश द फर्स्ट फैक्ट्री इन कैलिकट very important that factories at that point of time were not actually manufacturing factories because if you see the time period the industrial revolution has not actually started till now so factories were uh, just like offices only and the first factory was in calicut by pedros alvarez cadrel right francisco de almeida i have told you the blue water policy alfonso de arbicuac why do i say that he was the most powerful person because he acquired goa he acquired goa from sultan of bijapur theek hai and isse sawal aa chuka hai who was the governor who actually acquired goa from the sultan of bijapur it was alfonso de arbicuc and that is when he started establishing territory so very 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 important what was the year the year was 1510 So 1498, 1498 was the year when Vasco da Gama came to India, Portuguese traveler. And 1510 में ये Goa as a territory ले भी चुके हैं. So see how fast the Portuguese are moving. Another very important uh, event that happened in the reign of Alfonso the Arbicuc was the abolition of sati. Okay. so this is also very important for you to remember sati was abolished during his regime sati was abolished so as i said not the first governor but one of the most powerful ones then another uh, governor came and that governor is very important because he shifted the capital and from here question has been asked very recently there was this governor called nino da kanha nino da kanha he was a portuguese governor and he shifted the capital from kochi to goa from kochi to goa theek hai to capital was shifted to goa and as you know goa still has a strong portuguese culture in fact goa is the only state in india which has a uniform civil code and what is that uniform civil code the portuguese civil code right and how did that come across because see they abolished sati and all so everything is interrelated hai na history defines us sawal ye aaya tha ki kaun se wo ruler the who actually uh, granted this uh, this change of capital and who actually granted a lot of favors so there was this uh, ruler called bahadur shah of gujarat bahadur shah of gujarat now why is this person important sawal in me se aaya tha is personality ke upar sawal aaya tha this bahadur shah of gujarat was having conflict with humayun mughal dynasty is still going on and very strong so he secured help from the portuguese and he ceded the islands of basain so bahadur shah of gujarat was the person who ceded the island of basain and he also promised that they will get the portuguese will get a base in the territory of diu so daman and diu also portuguese territories so it was bahadur shah of gujarat in the year 1534 who actually granted a lot of favors so bahadur shah of gujarat yaad rakhna it is a very important uh, name of a ruler ठीक है तो ये हो गया नाउ कमिंग टू द क्वेश्चन अल्फोन्सो डिड नॉट चैंपियन द ब्लू वाटर पॉलिसी फर्स्ट इज इन करेक्ट अलमेडा वॉज द फर्स्ट गवर्नर यस एंड वास्को डे गामा इस्टेब्लिश फर्स्ट फैक्ट्री नो सो ओनली वन स्टेटमेंट हियर इज करेक्ट ठीक है नेक्स्ट पे आ जाओ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग अल्फोन्सो दे आर्बिक वर्क he introduced a permit system for others in the region he shifted the headquarters from cochin to goa during his time he was a contemporary of humayun and he attempted to increase portuguese influence in bengal by setting many portuguese factories how many of the uh, which one of the given statement is correct so which one is absolutely incorrect we know the second one is incorrect because 
that was nino de canha now if you see the time period of alfonso de albuquerque 1510 have the mughals even started ruling india no mughals actually won over india babar won over india in the first battle of panipat which was 1526 so mughals haven't even started so say a third statement has to be absolutely incorrect during this his time the uh, portuguese influence in bengal was not increased so fourth one is incorrect and yes first is absolutely correct along with securing territories he also introduced a permit system that whichever fact uh, whichever ships are roaming around india wanting to trade with india they need to have a permit from the portuguese itself theek hai and why is alfonso de albuquerque's rule most important because he acquired goa from the sultan of bijapur in 1510 very 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 important also because sati was abolished during his reign theek hai ji chalo so yahan pe first statement is correct next pe aa jao arrange the following events in their chronological order arrival of vasco da gama to india first battle of panipat arrival of captain hawkins to surat and establishment of the first dutch factory in india kaun sa chronological order hai to european se related hamara sabse pehla jo ek ek meet hai jo hamara the time we have met europeans is actually 1498 when vasco da gama came to india so this has to be the oldest regime the oldest uh, event you can even get a question which asks you a statement which asks you that the europeans arrived in india before the moguls did and this seems to be a very incorrect statement but it is actually correct hum basically ho kya raha we are studying europeans in modern india and we are studying moguls in medieval india and that is why our brain is wired to think that moguls must be before europeans only but portuguese came to india before moguls and this is very important for you to know so first is 1498 the second is first battle of panipat it is 1526 wherein um the babar and uh, this uh, ibrahim lodi they fought and the delhi sultanate fell and mughal dynasty started so this is the second event the third event is the establishment of first dutch factory in india so just think about it that dutch netherlands who do not have any strong hold in india today we don't have any as such history with netherlands even they came to india before the british and when did they did they establish their first factory they established their first factory in 1605 so what can you be asked that the first factory of dutch was established before the british yes this is true because first factory of british was established in 1613 1605 may their first factory was established in masuli patnam masuli patnam as you can clearly see the portuguese were also here so masuli patnam or machili patnam and the last event is arrival of captain hawkins to surat in 1608 theek hai after surat uh, thomas after uh, captain hawkins thomas uh, ro also came and it was thomas ro who actually asked for the first factory but before that captain hawkins had already come to jahangir's court this is also very important 1608 who was the mughal ruler jahangir was the mughal ruler and he was very much in favor of the british because he was he was just messed up with the way portuguese were handling so what is the chronology 1 2 4 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 4 is the correct answer ye chronology based questions if it is a not it is not a very deep rated question if it is not a very deep question so you can attempt this hai na this is a superficial question isi level ka question aaye aap kar sakte ho isse upar ke level ka mostly aayega nahi but agar aaye to that question is meant to be left theek hai so that is there next question 
with reference to the advent of European powers, which one of the following statements is not correct? The Portuguese captured Goa from the Marathas. The English opened their first factory in South at Masuli Patnam. In Eastern India, the English company opened its first factory in Odisha in 1633. And under the leadership of Duplay, the French occupied Madras in 1746. You don't even need to know the rest of the statements. You do know that which one is the incorrect statement over here because we have studied it. That the Portuguese captured, uh, captured Goa in 1510 from Sultan of Bijapur. Sultan of Bijapur. We just, just did it. So not from Marathas. It was Sultan of Bijapur. So first is incorrect. Automatically the rest of the three become correct. So these are also the facts that you need to know. English opened their first factory in South India at Masuli Patnam. So Masuli Patnam clearly a favorable destination. The Dutch opened their first factory. English opened their first factory in South in Masuli Patnam. And in Eastern India, English opened their first factory in Odisha in 1633. So see, 1613, first factory in Surat. And 1633, after 20 years, first factory in, on Eastern coast. So they are going near and near to Bengal. As the time is passing by, they are going near and near to Bengal. And under the leadership of Duplay, Duplay was a very powerful French governor. We'll study more about him. French occupied Madras in 1746. Very late. This is much after the death of uh, Aurangzeb actually. And this is when Muhammad Shah Rangila is ruling. Okay. So that is there. First is incorrect. Rest of the three is correct. Next, Piajo. Question number eight. Consider the following assertion. The Dutch could not form an empire in India at the scale of English and the Portuguese. Reasoning, the Dutch were more interested in commercial interest in East Indies. Which one of the following is correct? So, ye dono hi statements correct hai. And is bina confused nahi hona. The Dutch could not expand in India because they were only interested in commercial interest. They did not intervene in the political affairs. So first statement is correct. Second is correct. First is the uh, second is the reason for first. But there are another. There is another power called the Danes. Danes from Denmark. Danes were also not able to establish a very strong. Nothing they were able to establish as such. And why is that? Because Danes were interested in religious conversion. Okay. So Dutch or Danes ke reasons alag alag hain. Is mein confuse nahi ho jana. Danes were interested in religious conversion and that is why the Danes were not able to establish in India. Dutch were interested in commercial interests and that is why they were not able to establish in India. Theek hai. So that is there. Now let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements. The Dutch were the first European powers to discover a direct sea route to India. The Portuguese established a strong trading relationship with the Vijayanagar Empire. And the Dutch were the last European power to establish their, pres uh, their presence in India. Which of the given statements is correct? So, we know who was the first power to discover a direct sea route to India. It was the... Portuguese. Who did it in the Portuguese? It was Vasco de Gama. So first is absolutely incorrect. Second is a factual information that uh, is actually correct that Portuguese established a stronghold, a strong trading relationship with the Vijayanagar Empire and they even helped the Vijayanagar Empire to win over the uh, neighboring powers. So second is actually correct. Now you see the third statement. The Dutch were the last European powers to establish their presence in India. No, it was actually the French who was the last European power to establish their presence in India. And let's just see. So according to this, only one is correct. Let's just see that which European power established when in India. One, we know Portuguese. Portuguese, yes. Uh, first to come, last to go. 
and uh, they came to India in 1498 and they left India in 1961. So they were the last to go, right? Then you talk about the Dutch. The Dutch East India Company was created in 1602, right? And they established their first factory in 1605. So Dutch established their factory before the English did. Then you come to the English. The English East India Company was set up in 1599. They gained the Royal Charter in 1600. Came to India in 1608. William Hawkins at the Jahangir's court. And in 1613 established their first factory. Fine. Then come the Danes. Danes from Denmark. They established their first factory uh, in 1620. Fine, because since the Portuguese uh, started ruling over parts of India, it became very clear that India was very profitable. Right? So more and more powers are coming now. And the last was the French. French East India Company bani hi 1664 mein hai. Right? And in 1668, the first French factory was set up at Surat. Thik. So last one to establish their stronghold was French. And uh, English were the third one. Dutch never established their stronghold as such. But then they were before English for sure. So this is your chronology. Yaad rakhni hai. Fine. Next. Which of the following is regarded as the major cause? of English commercial interests in Asia and India, specifically in the 16th century. Francis Drake's voyage around the world in 1580 and English victory over the Spanish Armada. Decline of the Portuguese colonies in India. Opening up of new land route from Europe to Asia through the Ottoman Empire. And loss of American colonies after the American independence. So, why was the English suddenly so interested in uh, this Indian trade and East Indian trade? Because they got a sense of confidence. Basically, they saw that Francis Drake did a voyage around the world in 1580. So, that means their naval powers were strengthened. And they also gained victory over Spanish Armada against Spain. Right? Before the English started having uh, global ambitions, it was just the Spain and Portuguese which were fighting amongst themselves. Portuguese had control over the East and uh, the Spain had control over the West. That is why you see in Latin America, in South America, Spanish is the language that they mostly use. In India and in uh, East India overall, e uh, East... Um, you know, Eastern world overall, English is the language. Because eventually, first the Portuguese took over, then eventually the English took over from them, right? Even French is not very strong over here. So, first is correct. There was no decline of Portuguese colonies in India. In fact, the British fought with the Portuguese, right? So, this is incorrect. Opening up of new land route from Europe to Asia through the Ottoman Empire, no. The land route uh, was already opened. This was not the reason why they came in. In fact, they were not very comfortable coming from the Ottoman Empire, West Asia, what we call it. Because there was so much of piracy, there was so much of interference, there was so much of violence also. And loss of American colonies after the American independence, this happened much, much later. So this is also incorrect. So first is the correct statement. This is why... English commercial interests actually raised. And how did they uh, establish their commercial interests? Again, I am reminding you. 1599, East India Company is set up. 1600, Queen Elizabeth I grants a charter to the East India Company and gives exclusive rights of trading to East India Company with, the, in, uh, with India. Right? So that is where history changed for us. Okay, and when did they come? They come, came in 1608 in the court of Jahangir and Jahangir happily accepted them. Fine. Chal. Next pe chalo. Consider the following. The English were allowed to trade in Bengal through the sanction of Shah Shuja. 
and the first english factory in bengal was in murshidabad in 1651 which of the following which of the above is incorrect incorrect statement pooch hai so basically hua kya tha ki you all know that bengal was the most important territory of english in the long run hai na and it was much much later in 1911 that they shifted capital from bengal to delhi it was much later so shah shuja was actually the subadar और जिसे हम गवर्नर भी बोलते हैं सूबेदार बोलते हैं ना तो सूबेदार या फिर गवर्नर थे वो बंगाल के एंड इट वाज इन 1651 दैट ही अलाउड द इंग्लिश टू ट्रेड इन बंगाल और कैसे अलाउ किया उन्होंने फॉर अ रिटर्न पेमेंट ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज ठीक है थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज वो कंपल्सरी पेमेंट उनसे लेंगे एंड दे कैन ट्रेड विदाउट गिविंग एनी अदर ड्यूटी टू शाह सूजा so that was there now uh, where was the first english factory in bengal set up because bengal was such an important territory aapko pata hona chahiye sabse pehli factory jo thi it was on the banks of river hugli and what was the year the year was 1651 itself theek hai to murshidabad nahi tha hugli tha and uh, year bilkul sahi likha hai and what have i told you earlier that in these kind of questions where year is also there location is also there name is also there to yahan pe kitne facts ho gaye english factory in bengal in murshidabad in 1651 right most probably itne sare facts ek statement mein sahi nahi ho sakte hain so second is incorrect first is absolutely correct and that's why the answer is two only because the question is asking which one of the following is incorrect Along with this, यहां पर भी और और कहां कहां पे फैक्ट्रीज लगाई इन्होंने आफ्टर हुगली इन बंगाल कासिम बाजार इंपॉर्टेंट लोकेशन है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट लोकेशन है कासिम बाजार में फैक्ट्री लगाई दे ऑल्सो एस्टैब्लिश फैक्ट्री इन पटना बिकॉज टेरिटरीज ऑफ बिहार वर पार्ट ऑफ बेंगाल एज वेल एंड राजमहल जो राजमहल हिल्स हम पढ़ते हैं ना छोटा नागपुर प्लेट्यू वहां पर भी इन्होंने लगाई so this was important shah shuja becomes an important person jis jis insaan ne bhi whoever has helped the british or any european power to establish stronghold in india jaise bahadur shah gujarat ki baat hogi they become important from exam point of view theek hai so two only is correct next consider the following statements related to dutch again netherlands Dutch were ousted from the state of Travancore after the Battle of Kolachal, and Battle of Hugli effectively defeated the Dutch in India. Which of the given statements are correct? Now we are talking about the decline of Dutch. So, इसको जरा समझ लो, because Dutch was considered to be a formidable power, but it was declined. So, basically, क्या हुआ था? Battle of Kolachal, important battle है. it was in the year 1741 so it was in the year when later moguls have come up and mohammad shah rangila is here so it was fought between the dutch and the ruler of travancore travancore ke ek uh, king the jinka naam aapne zarur suna hoga he was martanda verma martanda verma so this person becomes important and uh, he actually won the battle dutch lost the battle so yahan par ek local ruler se wo haar gaye to ye problematic ho gaya right then again it did not end the entire uh, you know fight of the dutch that was there but then it gave a major setback to the dutch फिर उसके बाद आती है एंग्लो डच राइवलरी एंग्लो डच राइवलरी जो है वो बैटल ऑफ हुगली और इस बैटल ऑफ हुगली के कई सारे नाम हैं बैटल ऑफ चिंसुरा भी बोलते हैं इसको बैटल ऑफ चिंसुरा और बैटल ऑफ बिदारा ये तीनों में से कोई भी नाम आए तो ये समझ जाना दैट दिस इज एंग्लो डच एंड इन हिस्ट्री वेर एवर एन अदर यूरोपियन पावर हैज लॉस्ट इट हैज लॉस्ट बिकॉज the english have defeated it so this particular battle happened in 1759 this battle happened in 
between the Dutch and the British East India Company. And of course, the British East India Company won, Dutch lost. Okay. And this particular battle was not fought directly. This Dutch was actually fought by Mir Jafar. Mir Jafar ka naam aapne suna hoga. He was the Nawab of Bengal. So he was fighting against the British. Supported by the Dutch. And when he lost, that was the time then uh, this particular Dutch ambitions were ended. Okay. So Dutch ka jo hai, fir pura focus badal gaya. They went to the Indonesian Spice Islands. And unka pura India mein se stronghold nikal gaya. This person Mir Jafar will play a very important role in your uh, battle of Plassey also. Okay. So this is very important. And uh, yes. Battle of Plassey has happened in uh, 1757. And in 1759, mein Battle of Chinsura, Bidara or Hugli has happened. Mir Jafar, who was earlier a puppet of the British, has now been ousted by the British and Mir Qasim has brought in. And at that time, pe, Mir Jafar fought with the British and he decisively lost. And then again, British reinstated him. Okay, so these are a lot of things. And this is how Battle of Chinsura is important. Battle of Kolachal is important. Next question. Consider the following statements. The French subordinated their commercial interests to territorial ambition. Lack of effective commanders and administrators and presence of more powerful European navies like England and Portugal. How many of the above are reasons for the decline of the French possessions in India? Because the French lost from the British, that's why this question is important. And here all the three are important. Okay? All the three are reasons why the French could not succeed. Another very important reason is because French East India Company was a public entity. Was a public entity. It was governed by the government of French. It was not a private entity. So the profit motive was not very strong for them. And that is why they were not able to succeed very well. Whenever government interference is involved, then the performance reduces. So this is actually what happened for the French. That they got so involved in the internal matters of Indians that they forgot that they were here in India to actually earn money. Hey na? They got involved in uh, the local matters a bit too much. Right? So that was there. Then, so here all three are correct. Next, pe chalo. Consider the following statements regarding Francis Xavier. He arrived in India when Akbar was the Mughal emperor. He helped build the St. Stephen's Church in Tamil Nadu. And his missionary activities were welcomed by the native rulers of southern India. Which one of the given statements is correct? Francis Xavier is important because he is considered one of the um, people who led to the advent of Christianity in India. But Francis Xavier did not come when Akbar was the ruler. Francis Xavier was actually there when Sher Shah Suri was the ruler. When we will study the Mughals, you will study that Sher Shah Suri ousted Humayu for a certain period of time. And this is when Francis Xavier came in, in 1542. Right? So, um, that was there. And second statement is absolutely correct. He helped build the St. Stephen's Church in Tamil Nadu. However, never will any local governor or any local ruler encourage missionary activities, encourage uh, conversion related activities. What are missionary activities? Uh, they are conversion related activities which enable the person to convert others to their own religion. So they are never welcomed by the local rulers. And uh, Francis Xavier actually was very strong when it comes to missionary activities. So third one is incorrect. And this particular, uh, you know, establishing church and creating these kind of orders and baptizing. Baptizing, I hope you have heard conversion into Christianity. It was opposed both by the Muslims because us time pe the Sher Shah Suri Raj was going on and usse pehle Mughal Raj was going on. And the Hindus as well. Both were not happy with the, this conversion activity. So here, 
only one statement is correct. Francis Xavier came to India when Sher Shah Suri was the ruler. ठीक है चलो नेक्स्ट पे चलो विद रेफरेंस टू पुडुचेरी कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट द पोर्तुगीज वर द फर्स्ट टू ऑक्यूपाई पॉन्डिचेरी द सेकेंड यूरोपियन पावर टू ऑक्यूपाई पॉन्डिचेरी वर द फ्रेंच एंड द इंग्लिश नेवर ऑक्यूपाइड पॉन्डिचेरी दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन हैव कम अप बिकॉज पॉन्डिचेरी स्टिल हैज द कोलोनियल रिमेन्स इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो इट्स हिस्ट्री जस्ट लाइक वी नो फॉर कोची so first statement is absolutely correct portuguese were the first one to occupy pondicherry we study about karaikal yanam mahe right so first is correct second one is not correct french was not the second power the dutch were the second power so what is the chronology the portuguese then the dutch and then the french and till independence and even after independence uh the french was actually the one who were actually the one who were over the portuguese so second one is incorrect not immediately after the portuguese french took over beech mein dutch also took over and english never occupied pondicherry this is uh, also correct uh, this is also incorrect english actually occupied pondicherry twice two times for very brief periods first in 1793 they occupied it and then from 1802 to 1816 they occupied it right and finally it was again the french which was able to take it over so english french portuguese dutch all four powers have occupied pondicherry this is important for you to know because pondicherry is an important one so english never occupied pondicherry is incorrect and uh, because english did to occupy pondicherry at two instances theek hai so here only one statement is correct next we are jo consider the following statements about dutch east india company the dutch east india company was the first european company which was formed for trade in india and dutch east india company established its headquarters at serampore Which of the given statements is correct? How many नहीं Which होना चाहिए यहाँ पे तो first तो हमें पता है it is absolutely incorrect because it was the Portuguese. After Portuguese, it was the British East India Company which was created, and after it was created, then the Dutch East India Company was created in 1603. However, Dutch came to India before British. ठीक है so uh, dutch east india company was created in 160203 came to india in 1605 and uh, second one is absolutely incorrect not the first place serampore was not the first place serampore is basically shirampur not the first place to be established but the headquarter of dutch the netherlands people was in serampore and isko serampore mission bhi bolte hain so सेकेंड वन इज इन करेक्ट सेकेंड वन इज करेक्ट फर्स्ट वन इज इन करेक्ट ठीक है तो डच इंपॉर्टेंट है बिकॉज देखो इंग्लिश फ्रेंच ये सब बहुत अच्छे से लोग कर लेते हैं डच वर इंपॉर्टेंट पावर्स एट वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नो दैट वेयर दे एक्चुअली स्टूड वेन इट कम्स टू द पावर्स ठीक है नेक्स्ट पे चलते हैं कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग सेटलमेंट फोर्ट लुई पोर्चुगीज फोर्ट मैनुअल फ्रेंच Fort Saint George, Dutch, and Fort William, British. How many of the given statements are correct? These forts' ke naam hai, and important forts ke naam hi puchega UPSC. It's not that ki bahut detail mein puchenge. So important forts ke naam jo hai, wo humne likh diye hain. Fort Louis was not a Portuguese settlement. It was a French settlement. ठीक है, and French settlement hai. So socho kahan pe banaya hoga? Kahan pe banaya ja sakta hai? Just think about it. it will obviously be made in portu uh, sorry puducherry pondicherry theek hai to pondicherry mein french dwara banaya gaya mid 18th century mein jab bhi ye log fortify karte hain that means that that territory has uh, increased presence of that particular power so first incorrect ho gaya then fort manuel ye ulta kiya hua hai this is not by french this is by portuguese Fort Manuel is by Portuguese and Portuguese का है तो कहां पर होगा सोचो it would be in Kochi 
ठीक है इट वॉज इन कोची फर्स्ट फर्स्ट प्लेस टू फोर्टिफाई एंड दिस वॉज इन फिफ्टीन जीरो थ्री ठीक है कोची को फोर्टिफाई कर लिया था इन्होंने द थर्ड वन फोर्ट सेंट जॉर्ज ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड ये आपको पता होना चाहिए इसका नाम आप बार बार सुनेंगे फोर्ट सेंट जॉर्ज बाय वॉज नॉट बाय डच इट वॉज बाय ब्रिटिश इट वॉज अ ब्रिटिश स्ट्रॉन्ग होल्ड एंड इट वॉज इन चेन्नई मड्रास बेसिकली द ईयर वॉज सिक्सटीन फोर्टी फोर दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्ट ओनली दैट इज वाई दे आर मैं and fort st william very important it was indeed by british you must have heard about it it was in bengal basically kolkata and the year was 1696 so nearing the 18th century we are going hai na right now 1696 is the 17th century you nearing the 18th century so here only one is correct fort louis फ्रेंच फोर्ट मैनुअल पोर्तुगीज सो इन दोनों को उल्टा किया हुआ है एंड सेंट जॉर्ज एंड फोर्ट विलियम बोथ आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बोथ आर बाय ब्रिटिश सो ओनली वन हियर इज द करेक्ट आंसर वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दीज काइंड ऑफ फोर्ट द ओनली पर्पज इज टू प्रोटेक्ट द कमर्शियल इंटरेस्ट एंड इवेंचुअली द टेरिटोरियल इंटरेस्ट ऑल्सो नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग बेस्ट एक्सप्लेन ब्रिटिश डोमिनेंस इन एम्पायर बिल्डिंग इन इंडिया सुपीरियर नेवी लार्जेस्ट एक्टिव मिलिट्री प्रेजेंस इन इंडिया फर्स्ट टू एस्टैब्लिश फैक्ट्रीज इन बेंगाल एंड ओनली नेशन टू ऑप्टेन इंपीरियल फरमान फ्रॉम द मुगल एम्पर तो ये कौन सा एक प्राइमरी फैक्टर है जिसने ब्रिटिश को हेल्प किया टू डिफीट ऑल दी अदर पावर्स the primary factor all these are also the factors first of all it was not the first to establish factories in bengal it did not have largest active uh, military presence you know if you were to say even the local ruler raja ranjit singh had a very strong army hai na it was a local army formed on european lines so this is not correct again only nation to obtain imperial farman from the mughal emperor no even this is incorrect Uh, the portuguese were also able to secure some kind of um, assurances from the mughals hai na to trade so the foremost reason for the british was their superior navy and this is the reason which helped them to defeat french mostly the french again the french were the last one to come to india but uh, they were a very formidable power hai na तो सुपीरियर नेवी की वजह से द ब्रिटिश हैव बीन एबल टू डिफीट एवरी अदर पावर ठीक है अदर फैक्टर्स भी थे बट प्राइमरीली इट वाज़ द सुपीरियर नेवी ऑफ द ब्रिटिश फोर्सेस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग एंड व्हेन देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन इन द फर्स्ट लाइन यू हैव टू कम टू दिस हाउ मेनी ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वर इंट्रोड्यूस बाय द पोर्तुगीज इन इंडिया इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वेरियस फॉरन क्रॉप इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ प्रिंटिंग प्रेस introduction of fermentation and culinary techniques and introduction of gunpowder isme se kya kya portuguese ne not even the british the portuguese introduced so gunpowder wale se aap ye pakka jaan sakte hain if you have done the pyqs that gunpowder existed from uh, earlier times also theek hai gunpowder jo hai wo mughals and even delhi sultanate ke time se exist kar raha tha so this one is incorrect gunpowder was not introduced by the europeans it was indigenously known various foreign crops were definitely introduced in fact you will be surprised to know that potato is not an indigenous crop it is a foreign crop tomato is a foreign crop then tobacco is a foreign crop and even the foremost crop one of the foremost crops of india jis wajah se india ka trade bahut zyada flourish karta hai spices स्पाइसिस बेसिकली चिली वॉज ऑल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस बाय द पोर्तुगीज ठीक है तो फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इज ऑल्सो एब्सोलूटली करेक्ट एंड दिस इज अ फैक्ट दैट यू नीड टू नो दैट प्रिंटिंग प्रेस इन इंडिया वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस बाय द पोर्तुगीज इन फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी एंड वेन वॉज द फर्स्ट प्रिंटिंग प्रेस इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन इंडिया वेन वॉज द फर्स्ट प्रेस सेटअप इट वॉज इन फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी सिक्स एंड सेटअप इन सेंट पॉल्स कॉलेज गोवा 
ठीक है अफकोर्स गोवा में ही होगा बिकॉज गोवा वॉज द स्ट्रॉन्ग होल्ड राइट सो गोवा में सेंट पॉल्स कॉलेज में प्रिंटिंग प्रेस वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड येस द थर्ड वन इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट दैट फर्मेंटेशन एंड कलिनरी टेक्निक्स वर इंट्रोड्यूस दिस इज अ जेनेरिक पॉइंट तो यहां पर ओनली थ्री इज द करेक्ट आंसर गन पाउडर वॉज एग्जिस्टिंग फ्रॉम अर्लियर टाइम्स इट सेल्फ ठीक है चलो नेक्स्ट पे चलो With respect to modern Indian history, which of the following best explains the Karthas system? A naval trade license or pass issued by the Portuguese Empire in the Indian Ocean during the 16th century. A doctrine enacted by Warren Hastings, which involved defending their neighbors' frontiers in order to safeguard their own territories. A military tactic of aligning with na native rulers, interfering in their local conflicts. and portuguese system of converting local populations to christianity kartas system kya hai kartas system is a portuguese system jisme ki indian ocean mein especially the bay of bengal region wahan se jo bhi trade karna chahe that has to that power has to issue a license or a pass that would be issued by the portuguese empire so this was the kartas system and um, why was this introduced so that the influence of the local rulers and the arabic merchants from ottoman empire west asia that could be reduced and this kartas system actually enabled portuguese to become a formidable power so first is correct now second doctrine enacted by warren hastings baki bhi dekh lete hain ki kya hai this is actually the policy of ring fence This is actually the policy of ring fence जो हम पढ़ेंगे आगे जाके इन द अपकमिंग लेक्चर जिसमें की विच लेटर डेवलप्ड इन टू द पॉलिसी ऑफ सब्सिडरी अलायंस सो सेकेंड इज रिंग फेंस पॉलिसी मिलिट्री टैक्टिक ऑफ अलाइनिंग विद नेटिव रूलर्स इंटरफेयरिंग इन देयर लोकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दिस वॉज सीन इन द एंग्लो फ्रेंच राइवलरी एंग्लो फ्रेंच राइवलरी जो कि कर्नाटिक वॉर्स में दिखी थी राइट right? so even this is incorrect and portuguese system of converting local population to christianity this is just missionary activity jo ki portuguese karte the they were very violent hai na to first is kartas system is important next pe chalo consider the following event, uh, events and arrange the above events in chronology of their occurrence dhyan se dekhte hain Sir Thomas Roe, ambassador of King James I, arrives at Jahangir's court. The company established its first factory in the south in Masuli Patnam. Farooq Siar issued a farman called the Magna Carta of the company. Dupley became the governor general of Pondicherry, and British King Charles II is given Bombay as dowry. सबसे पहले जो इवेंट आपको पता है that is the event of sir thomas ro coming to the court of jahangir in the year 1615 theek hai 1615 mein aate hain to aapko jitno ke year yaad hain wo kar lete hain now just one year after this he was able to open first factory in south first factory in india to ho chuki hai established 1613 mein but in south in masuli patnam 1616 में पहली फैक्ट्री जो है वो एस्टैब्लिश हो जाती है देन फारूक सी आर इशूड अ फरमान कॉल्ड मैग्ना काटा ऑफ कंपनी दिस सी हाउ यू कैन अराइव एट दिस फारूक सी आर वॉज अ लेटर मुगल राइट लेटर मुगल स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ औरंगजेब इन 1707. सो दिस हैज टू बी इन द एटीन सेंचुरी वॉट वॉज द एग्जैक्ट ईयर जस्ट टेन ईयर्स आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ औरंगजेब इन सेवनटीन Farooq Siar who was the Mughal ruler incapable Mughal ruler issued a farman it was called the Magna Carta of the company which allowed the East India Company to trade freely so that was there then Dupley Dupley was the French governor who became the governor general of Pondicherry much later in 1741 abhi jab hum Anglo French wars padhenge Carnatic wars padhenge sab clear ho jayega and the British king Charles II was given bombay as dowry by the portuguese in 1622 how british expanded all their interests just think about it they not just did the military endeavors but they also interfered in the uh, local affairs 
and they also allied with the other european powers that's the portuguese so with that logic you have one at the very first so c and d will be eliminated then you have company establish its first factory that is 2 and then you have 5 that the british king charles 2 gave is given bombay as dowry so here you can arrive at b and in these chronology kind of questions mostly first two options would be clear first option first two options would be clear to most people it would be just one or two options that would be so missed misplaced that you would place that option at the end and with that kind of logic you would arrive at the answer theek hai to aapko bas is cheez ka dhyan rakhna hota hai ki kaun si kaun sa jo option hai wo bilkul hi nonsensical option hai wo is century mein hi nahi aata right so for here it is this option farooq siar because this is a part of 18th century part of later moguls theek hai so b is the correct answer over here क्रोनोलॉजी वाले क्वेश्चन देख के डरना बिल्कुल जेनुअन है बट देन क्रोनोलॉजी वाले क्वेश्चन देखते ही आपकी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग अप्रोच स्टार्ट हो जानी चाहिए राइट यू शुड जस्ट इमीडिएटली स्टार्ट प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग अप्रोच इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट लीविंग द क्वेश्चन रीड इट वंस रीड इट ट्वाइस इफ इट इज सॉल्वेबल इफ दीज आर इवेंट्स दैट यू आर इवन रिमोटली अवेयर ऑफ ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट इफ नॉट मूव अहेड फाइन नेक्स्ट पे चलो कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट The first French factory in India was at Surat, and the Treaty of Ryswick restored Pondicherry to the French from Dutch. Which uh, which of the following statements are actually correct? So French factory, pehli jo hai, wo Surat mein hi banayi gayi thi. It was the last power to create a factory. What was the year? We have discussed it, sixteen sixty four. So French factory at Surat. एंड ट्रीटी ऑफ राइसविक जो है ये बिल्कुल सही लिखा गया है दैट दिस वॉज द ट्रीटी विच रिस्टोर्ड पॉन्डिचेरी टू द फ्रेंच सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट फ्रॉम द फ्रेंच द डच टूक पॉन्डिचेरी देन ब्रिटिश टूक पॉन्डिचेरी एंड देन इन द लास्ट फ्रेंच टूक पॉन्डिचेरी राइट सो ट्रीटी ऑफ राइसविक रिस्टोर्ड पॉन्डिचेरी टू फ्रेंच फ्रॉम द डच इज एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट एंड दिस ट्रीटी is in the year 1697 theek hai so at the end of the 17th century this treaty was there and since we have mentioned it there is a reason we have mentioned it because this particular year we have had the french president emmanuel macron visit as the republic day guest so that is why french relations and french as a colonial power becomes important so one and two both are correct over here theek hai next pe chalo consider the following events the french army captured the english forts at saint david and uh, vijayanagaram during the first carnatic war and the seven years war in europe was the background for the third carnatic war which one of the given statements is correct so here both the statements are talking about the third carnatic war and these carnatic wars are nothing but the anglo french rivalry so french army captured the english forts of saint david and vijayanagaram during the first carnatic war no during the third carnatic war and what is the time period it is somewhere around 1758 theek hai and who was the french uh, uh, who was the commander in chief it was count de lally count de lally who was representing and leading the french forces in the third carnatic war and while fighting in india the french and the british were fighting in europe as well in the seven years of war theek hai and this was the background for the third carnatic war so this is absolutely correct this seven years war erupted in 1756 this was the time period in the 18th century when a lot of things were happening you know 1757 battle of plassey will also happen so here only two only the second statement is correct next question which of the following best explains why the battle of wandi wash was a pivotal moment for the english in india it is for the first time that they acquired territories from a native indian ruler effective 
effective end of French power in India and victory of the English. It enabled the English to gain access to India's eastern coasts and it enabled the English to make Mughal emperor a puppet ruler. Dekho, teen Carnatic wars hui hain and the last Carnatic war ended with the battle of Wandi Wash wherein it was very very clear uh, that the English have defeated the French. So, third Carnatic war, here is the French, here is the British. French ko represent kar rahe the Count de Lally that I just told you. Count de Lally. And the British were being represented by Sir Iyer Coot. Theke? This particular battle was actually a confrontation between the French and the British. And this ended with the battle of Wandi Wash. And here... The French was decisively, decisively defeated, British decisively won. And that is why effective end of French power in India and victory in England. What was the time period of this third Anglo-French uh, war? This was from 1756 to 1763. So this is very important. It was a pretty long war. Hai na? Saat saal, seven years war jo chali thi hamari. Uh, in logo ki, in the Europe, that particular war translated into the third Carnatic War. Theek hai? And this battle of Wandi Wash has been won in 1760. Theek hai? So, bohat close-knit cheeze hai ye. And as we keep on solving more and more questions, you will be getting clarity over how all of this happened. Last question for the day. Consider the following statements. Portuguese were the last colonial empire to leave India after independence. The British purchased the Andaman and Nicobar Islands from the Dutch. And Fort St. George at Madras was established before Fort William at Calcutta. How many of the given statements is correct? One statement you already know that definitely Portuguese was the last colonial empire to leave India. 1761 they left from Goa. Um, the second one, British purchased the Andaman and Nicobar Islands tak theek hai, but not from the Dutch, from the Danes, people from Denmark. Theek hai? Danes had control over Andaman and Nicobar and uh, this particular right was taken over by the British in 1868, much later. Theek hai? So, second is incorrect. And third one, Fort St. George was definitely established before Fort William. We have studied about both the forts, St. George and Fort William, both of them. Okay, so St. George uh, was established before Fort William and Calcutta became the most important stronghold. But before that, the English had a whole journey from the west to the east, from the western coast to the eastern coast. So that's why it was not the only thing. It was not the uh, uh, first thing. Calcutta was not the first thing to be made the stronghold by the English. Right? So, yes, here only two statements are correct. Now, what I want you to do after this particular class, you can do three things. Either whatever facts have been told to you here have, are, be, are very important. The most important facts of the arrival of Europeans, advent of Europeans chapter. But you have to read the entire chapter. So either you read it from Spectrum or you read it from your own notes. Or if you are not comfortable with both of them and you want to rely on another material, you can go for Sunya IS prelims books. Sunya prelims books wherein everything is very uh, clearly demarcated and you will be able to get the prelims, um, you know, understanding of every episode through prelims perspective and if you want that we solve all these questions in a similar way for the entire syllabus then you can go for this revised entire prelims syllabus through 3000 plus mcqs wherein we have done indian polity we have done indian economy we are doing modern history then we'll do geography current affairs art and culture ancient medieval environment ecology and science and tech through the question answer format the question mcq format which uh, enables you to make sure that your maximum, uh, you know, maximum uh, concentration is there on this particular concept, right? 
So through questions, you always understand better. And now is the time when you need to solve a lot of questions. Whatever facts you have read, most important facts are the advent of Europeans. Ke, but you need to read the chapter also on your own. Okay. So yes, that is all for today's class. I hope you derived some value out of this class. I will see you all in the next lecture. Thank you.